Welcome to the Building, building Blocks of Bass. My name is Bob Debu. Glad to be here. Today we're going to study Mr. PC. That's, of course, Mr. Paul Chambers. And it's also the name of a minor blues that was written by the great John Coltrane for Mr. Paul Chambers, right? So the intention today is to check out the form and really dig into what the changes are and also what Paul Chambers likes to walk under this recording, okay? So, of course, Mr. PC is a jam session standard. You've probably played it. You've definitely heard it if you're here checking this out. If not, go check it out. It's on, uh, you know, you, you can find it anywhere. So, um, but uh, let's check out, first and foremost, let's check out the form of the tune, and then we'll talk about how we're going to practice it today. So, let's look here. What I've got here is basically the breakdown of the chord changes for Mr. PC. This is part, as well, of the PDF that's available downstairs. Just click the link. It's totally free. Uh, click the link and you can get this PDF. It doesn't cost a thing. So what I've got here is the breakdown of the chord changes that are happening for Mr. PC. And it, again, is a minor blues. So what do we see first? We see that there's three lines. I've got this written out really systematically. It's all on purpose. We see three lines of four bars. We see the first one, the second one, the third one, so three times four, of course, is 12, right? So sorry about the handwriting, but that's what it is. Okay, so a couple things to keep in mind. It's a 12 bar blues, right? We just said that. But there are a couple variations that often get slept on when people play this song, Mr. PC. Uh, a couple note things first. You see that I've got Roman numerals written here, right? Say above the C minor seven. We're gonna be in the key of C minor for this tune, and it's recorded in that key key. So if we see a lowercase i with a 7, all that i means is that it's a number 1, like a Roman numeral 1, except when it's a lowercase that indicates minor. Okay? So just a couple housekeeping things there. Now, the first point that I want to make about the form of Mr. PC is in the second bar right here. Paul Chambers plays a 2-5-1 every single time on this second bar. You can also hear it in the piano comping, you can hear it in the soloing. Um, so it's really crucial to have that element when we're walking under Mr. PC to walk with that in mind. And we're gonna, we're gonna check that out specifically, just these first two bars, then the next six bars, and then two bars after that, and two bars after that. But we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So first key point, hit this minor two, five, one. Two, five, meaning in the key of C, we're gonna hit D, the G, back to C, okay? All right, so second key point, okay? The, we look at the second line, and that's all pretty much the same that we, uh, that we know from, like, say, a major blues, which is different. This is a minor blues. Here is the next big point, in the form at least, in the chord changes to Mr. PC, is that they are always playing a flat six. You see I've got that, that lowercase b to a Roman numeral six, and with the seventh, that means that it's a flat six dominant chord, otherwise known as an A flat seven. That's just the, you know, that's the theoretical way to do it. You know, if you're in school or whatever, that's what you would see. So anyways, on the uh, ninth and 10th bars or that third line, the first two bars, they're playing an A flat seven to G seven. Now, why is that important? It's important because oftentimes this first measure right here, people will play this like a minor two instead, like that D half diminished like we see back up here, right? That doesn't happen in Mr. PC. So if you're playing this the next time you're at a jam session or playing this tune wherever, don't play a D half diminished right there. I've heard it, it happens. I've done it too, I'm not gonna lie, but we were trying to get as authentic as we can. We really wanna understand this tune and especially as bass players, we need to honor Mr. PC, right? So doing our due diligence and really checking out what the chord changes are. Okay, so once again, this is the form to Mr. PC, and we're gonna break this up in four different ways, okay? And study three different examples of uh, what Paul is walking for each of these sections. The first section is gonna be right here, first two bars. The next section that we're gonna check out in the two bars is that bottom two, the flat six, seven, the flat, the flatted dominant sixth chord. <laughs> no, is that what I mean? The A flat seven to G seven. And then finally, not finally, but next, the uh, one chord to the five chord at the end. And then we're gonna figure out this information that's up in here. 
All right, so that's a lot of scribbles on the screen. Let's get into it and let's start practicing, okay? So um, what I want to do is we're going to look at our first example of the first two bars, okay? So remember, the first two bars, in the first two bars, there's the one chord and what we were talking about earlier, that minor 2-5, right? It's really important to, to be able to hear that. So we're going to get into that right now. So let me get my, let me get myself situated here. Sorry. We're not going to do it up to speed. Mr. PC is, uh, is pretty fast, right? And uh, so we're just basically what we're going to do is take these smaller bits or bites or whatever the correct term is and really digest them. So these are the first two bars that Paul plays like, man, like 50% of the time when he's walking over Mr. PC. So let's get them in, let's get them under our fingers and repeat them a bunch, okay? So just play them with me. The click, the metronome that I have going here is on beat four, okay? So let's start by hearing that. Let's just say four, four, two, four, two, four, two, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So try this line with me now. One, two, one, two, three, go. Now he's heading to that C minor chord. These are the first two bars again, right? So let's play it again. One, two, one, two, three, go. Now you can see in the second measure over here, he's hitting D on the D half diminished, but he's going to the third of G7. It's a crucial point to help us memorize this, okay? All right, I'm going to take it away now because the goal is for us to memorize and really internalize some of this information. So play it with me. We're going to do it five times. And if you need the, the PDF or whatever, it's totally cool. Click the link downstairs. You can get that uh, totally free. So one, two, one, two, three, go. Let's do it again. Again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, again. Okay, I think that was four. Let's do it five times. Here's our fifth now. Okay, do you have it memorized? That's a key element to, to getting this stuff under our fingers and in our ears and just repeat it, okay? Again, these are all, this is directly taken from Paul Chambers' transcription. Um, from the actual recording, okay? So this is legit stuff, did it myself. Here, let's look at the second, the second kind of iteration. Again, that A, uh, that A example of these first two bars, Paul does that a ton. Paul also does this. Let's look at this real quick. So starting at the first measure, he's starting on the third, the third of the C minor chord, which is E flat, right? So let's play this line. One, two, one, two, three, go. Now that B is definitely wanting to lead to C, right? To get to the one of the next chord. This is leading to the third bar, which again is C minor. But let's break down what the line is. It's starting on the third, right? Of the C minor, he's starting on the third. When he gets to the two chord, he's also hitting the third of D half diminished, and then the root of G. So we can use those as landmarks, right? That's important. We're thinking about the landmarks. We don't always want to hit the root of each chord change. It's important to know that there's this, this minor 2-5 in there, but if we every time did this, which I hear from a lot of, from a lot of bass players, do you know what I mean? That's cool, that's cool. You're outlining the changes, but to get a little elevated on that, hitting thirds, hitting fifths sometimes, uh, even sevenths, uh, other ways to do it. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. So let's shed this line a bit now. Okay, let's play it two times and then I'll take it off the screen. One, two, one, two, three, go. And we're just finishing the dot there. One, two, one, two, three, go. Okay, now, next bit of information on this line, regarding this line, is this B natural down here. I want to drop that down an octave because our next bit of information that we're going to practice is actually going to be mainly starting down here, okay? So the same line 
but drop this B natural down an octave. Try it with me. One, two, one, two, three, go. Let's do that again. And I'm just adding in the C at the end because that's where the line is going, right? All right, let's try it five times. One, sorry. One, two, one, two, three, go. Two, one, two, three, again. One, two, one, two, third time. Here comes the fourth. Go. One more time. One, two, three, here we go. Okay, cool. Now you remember that A, that first one we did? Let's try it. One, two, one, two, three, go. Now let's do the second, second thing that we practiced, that letter B. One, two, one, two, three, go. Third, third. Great. Excellent. Again, we're just dealing with the first two bars, and we're going to move on, and then we're going to mix and match and make our own Paul Chambers bass lines based off of these different sections. So here's the third iteration of these first two bars. Okay? Now, you'll notice the second bar is exactly the same as the previous example that we just practiced. So really, all we need to internalize is this first measure, and it's likely a pattern that you already know. So he's walking up chromatically from the, like, the second note of the scale into that F, but again, this is a minor 2-5, so he's hitting the third of that D half diminished. So let's try it. One, two, one, two, three, go. And again, that B up there, let's drop that down an octave so that we can complete the pattern and stay inside of what I have planned for the next section that we're going to practice, okay? So try this again. One, two, one, two, three, go. Right? Now there is an E natural in here, right? Uh, right about there. There's an E natural. It's simply leading to the F of this D half diminished. Chromaticism always works, and it's also on a weak beat, beat four. Beats two and four are the weak beats. Beats one and three are really where we want uh, a lot of chord tones to fall, especially on beat one. You want to hit a chord tone, right? Let's try it again. Actually, let's take it away because the second half of it is completely the same as what we did before. Let's try it. One, two, one, two, three, go. Two, one, two, three, again. One, two, third time here. It comes the fourth time. One, two, three, go. One more time. One, two, three, go. How did you do? Okay, so our three different variations, you can look, check the PDF downstairs if you have any trouble remembering them or want to look back at them. So let's move on now to these, like our second section that I want to practice, okay? And this is the next basically six bars. So we just had two, two plus six is going to give us the first eight, which is going to give us those first two lines of the, of the form, right? So I'm, I'm talking about right in here. We just did the first two bars. And now we're going to practice from, oh, over here, and then down to, sorry, my finger, finger game is way off. And then we're going to practice from here through here, okay? Anyways, that is going to first off look like this. What do we have here? This is still the, the uh, one chord on bars three and four, bars five and six, bars seven and eight, okay? Now notice here we have, um, we've got the one, the root of the C minor, and he's walking to the fifth. That's like the most common way that Paul will walk over, um, or one of the more common ways of walking over um, two measures of the same chord. So that's why we're studying this in a little bit more extended form. Uh, and we see in the third measure, he's hitting the third of F minor, right? He's not always going to the root. Then the fifth of F minor, the fifth of C minor, and then finally the root of C minor. So. It's cool to bounce around, but we, we need to kind of know where we're going and what our options are. Anyways, that's enough talking. Let's practice, right? One, two, play it with me, go.
Now this B natural, you, you're, we're going we're gonna to see, he does this, especially this last line, this last measure, commit that to memory immediately, because he does that 90% of the time, right? You can check the whole transcription. Uh, you can click the link downstairs to get the PDF, and you'll see all of this laid out that same way. But just believe me, trust me, learn that last measure. Let's play this line again. One, two, one, two, three, go. Down to the third, the fifth of F minor, to the fifth of C minor. Now this is a lot more information than just two bars. It's three times that, obviously. But can we get this in our memory? Try it again. One, two, one, two, three, go. Ah, and I already messed up. Let's try it again. One, two, one, two, three, go. Down to the third. And he's heading to that A flat. One more time. Okay, so cool. Let's let's now that we've got that, let's put one of our first two measures in front of this. So let's do this one. Let's put this in front of this. Okay, do you remember this one? This is the very first one we did. And that's getting us to that C for these second six bars. Got it down? All right, let's put them together now. One, two, one, two, three, go. to this A flat. Let's put that second bit of the first two bars in front of what we just practiced now, okay, to see how it works. Remember, we're going to stick this, uh, oh, by the way, this B natural, we're going to put it down an octave to make it work inside of this line. Okay, you remember this one? All right, good. So now put that in front of this. One, two, one, two, three, go. works, right? If you play it right. Let me try that again. Try with me. One, two, one, two, three, go. That's where I keep falling. All right, so I'm trying to do it without looking. He's going... That's where it is. Cool. So you see how I'm uh, proposing to practice that and how we're actually practicing it? But you can take it, take it further after we're logged off, right? You can put all of these, mix and match them, and uh, get, get lines that are just always going to work. That's part of the beauty of Paul's lines. I mean, it's just you can do stuff like that. Let's look at the second example of these six bars, OK? And again, we're talking about bars three, four, five, six, seven, eight, OK? So what's Paul doing here? Again, we're at the one chord, so he's hitting the root here. Here it is again where he's hitting the fifth on the second measure of playing on that same chord. We don't need to hit the root every measure, right? And what's he doing here? He's hitting the fifth of F minor. The same chromatic thing that we saw in the previous uh, A example, the root, the fifth, uh, the fifth of C minor, and down to the fifth. And look, here's that line again. That's where he's heading, right? So let's shed this line a little bit. One, two, one, two, three, go. And I'm just putting that A flat on the end of it because that's where he's heading. Okay, so while we're practicing this, draw back in your memory and grab that first example of the two bars. Okay, let's put that in front of this. Ready? One, two, one, two, three, go. Now we're playing what's written. So it works, right? Cool. Can we put that second first two bars in front of it and do the same thing? One, two, one, two, three, the third. Down an octave. Right, you can do the same thing with the, the, the third example of those first two bars as well. 
You can just keep doing this and doing this, right? So let's move on to our next example, okay? Here's the third. We're gonna each take each of these little sections. Again, it's the first two bars, the next six bars, then the two bars and two bars, and all that adds up to 12, just trust me. Um, and then this is our, our C example of these next six measures. Because I wanna see how Paul is vacillating from the one chord to the four chord to the one chord, and again, he's not always hitting the root on these chord changes. So what's happening here this time? He's hitting the root. Oh, and he is hitting the root again here. Root, root. He's almost making me a liar, right? Um, which, all, oh, yeah. The fifth of C minor right here, back to the root right there. So he's almost hitting the root every time. And it's not to say that that's a bad thing, right? But how does Paul do it this time? Play this with me. One, two, one, two, three, go. last bar again there it is three times in a row Paul does that almost all the time not every time but almost almost all the time let's play this again one two one two three go okay let's put that first example of the first two bars in front of this you still recall it right it's like this I was playing it out of time, but that one. Okay, so let's put those two bars in front of what you're seeing down here on the screen now. One, two, one, two, three, go. Now here we go. To the A flat, because we're always heading to that A flat chord, that flat six. Don't go to the minor two right there. And I'm talking about the ninth bar, right? Uh, let's see, can we put the B, the B version? That line in front of this example now? Let's try it. One, two, one, two, three, go. Here we go. Cool, so it works, right? Excellent. Let's move on. So now we're going to look at, in, inside of the form, we are going to look at this last, last four bars, except the first two bars of that, or the last staff here, whatever you want to call it, the A flat 7 to the G7. That's what we're going to study now, okay? So again, that's what's happening with the form right there. We've got to make sure we do that when we're playing uh, Mr. Paul Chambers' song. It's great minor blues, right? Now, not all minor blues are going to do this, where it goes to this flat six dominant chord. I'm just gonna say that again. And obviously there's other way, uh, a lot of different ways to play this tune, but, um, but putting that two five in the second bar, putting this flat six dominant to the five chord in the eighth and ninth, sorry, ninth and 10th bars, crucial to this song. That's how the song is played, okay? It's coming directly from the recording. There's just no two ways about it. <laughs> That's what it is. Okay, so let's look at our first example of these bars nine and 10. Now, this particular example, Paul does like a ton. Go listen to the recording. Uh, in, this, in, this, uh, in his bass line, he does this so, so often. It's not even funny. That's why we get that um, so often in our previous examples that we were just practicing, right? It's because often that B flat is leading to this, uh, where is it? This A flat right here. So let's practice it. Let's try it. These we can memorize, so we're gonna try to internalize these as quickly as possible. One, two, one, two, three, four. And he's heading to a C there at the end, that's why I played a C. It's not written here, but that's what's happening. Let's try it again. One, two, one, two, three, go. So, just an quick analyzation, what's he playing? Root, fifth, third, root. Triad, right? It's a triad. Root, fifth, third, fifth. Again, a triad. You don't have to make it. You don't have to make it too like complex. Don't be too hip. Triads work. Let's try it again. One, two, one, two, three, four. That's where he's heading. Okay. I'm gonna trust you have this memorized now. Let's try it five times. Ready? One, two, one, two, three, go. 
two, one, two, three, go. One, two, one, two, three, again. Two, one, two, three, again. One more time. One, two, three, go. Okay, cool. So now what we could do, but for the sake of time, we're, we're maybe going to hit this on the back end, but we could hit those first two bars, the next six bars, change those around, either do the A, the B, the C versions that I have written in the PDF that you can click the link downstairs to get. All of this is for free. Just click that link and you'll, you know, you have to put in your email, but you'll get the PDF for free. So, all right. So let's look at the next example of bars nine and 10. Again, this is over the A flat seven chord, the flat six dominant chord, if you wanna get you know bad about it. But here, Paul is hitting the fifth, the third, the, the two, and leading down to hitting the root because it's right next door to the G7. So it's flowing super easy, right? Or flowing linearly, small intervals, right? That's the idea. And then he's hitting one, three, two, five. Now this right here, that Paul does, man, so, so often, especially in the last two bars on the G chord, on the dominant chord, the very, well, the very last bar specifically, Paul will do this line just like nine times out of 10. So get that pattern under your, under your fingers too and in your ears. Let's play this. I'll stop talking about it. We'll play it and practice it. All right. One, two, one, two, three, go. Now we're heading to a C, that's why I played that there. Let's do it again. One, two, one, two, three, go. One, two, one, two, three, again. Okay, cool. I'm gonna take it away. Let's try it again. One, two, one, two, three, go. One, two, three, again. One, two, third time, here we go. Here comes the fourth time. One, two, three, go. Two, one, two, three, go. Cool. Sorry, I'm getting a buzz here. Gotta fix this. Okay, you got that memorized, right? Not a problem. Let's try something. Let's, uh, let's not try that one. Let's try the first example, the first two bars, then play this for the next six bars, and then play that first example of bars nine and 10, this. Let's see if we can put all that together. I'm giving you six bars here because that's a lot more information. The first two bars that we're gonna do, bring it back. Then we'll play this. Then after we play this, we'll do. Feel me? Let's try. It. One, two, one, two, three, go. Root five. Cool. So we're mixing and matching a little bit, using smaller bits of information and trying to internalize them. Okay? Okay, so we've done, oh, sorry, moving ahead. We've done this one, we just shed this one. Let's look at the third example of bars nine and 10 that I have for us today, okay? So again, we're looking at this, this is root, fifth, third, back to the fifth, and that gets us to the fifth of the G chord. You could justify this as a minor two, five, one, actually two, because it's got the D, and this is exactly what uh, Paul was playing in that second bar where it was the D half diminished to G7. Right? But let's shed this, okay? I'm sure you, this makes sense, right? So just trying to analyze it a little bit as we go. One, two, one, two, three, go. So where are we starting? Again. A smaller bit of information. Do it again. Great. Now I'm going to take it away. Try to do it without looking. One, two, three, again. Two, one, two, three, again. Two, 
One, two, three, go. Cool. You got that? You remember them all? First one. So very similar, right? Second one. That was different. But what's this one? The third one. Okay, and again, these are so, so common, these little cells that Paul uses, but it's oftentimes he's mixing and matching himself if you're coming from this logic, do you know what I mean? I mean, he's just walking beautiful bass lines, but it's all just so logical coming from him, like innately, that it makes sense to do this to me. Okay, so let's look at the last two bars. All right, these are the very last two bars of Mr. PC, the minor blues. Most often, you know, I've heard all kinds of people do, or all kinds of versions of these last two bars where people are doing. Or maybe. Which are valid. Do you know what I mean? Like those are turnarounds that you'll hear at the end of a blues, especially a minor blues, of course. Um, but that doesn't really happen too often with the way Paul is walking under this. So let's investigate. Okay. So. This first example, Paul is obviously landing on the root. This is a very, like, this is a pivotal point, right? You definitely want to hit the root while we're getting here uh, on this uh, 11th bar or whatever because we're back into the home key, okay? So as we're heading here, he is hitting the, the root of the G chord, right? So he's walking down using a little bit of that chromaticism from the 7th, right, to get get himself down to the G chord. So let's just practice it. One, two, one, two, three, go. You remember me telling you earlier about the last bar here, this one, three, two, five? So Paul does this, especially this example of this right here, again, so, so often when he's walking over this. So internalize this. One, two, one, two, three, go. Do it again. One, two, three, go. Cool, I'm gonna take it away, you got it? You got it. Two, one, two, three, again. Again, two, three, go. Just for safety's sake. Excellent. So repetition, repetition, just mixing, you know, mixing these little bits together, but really repeating them a ton. Try to internalize them. Let's look at the next example of that. I have three examples for each of these sections. That's why I'm doing it this way. So let's look here. This is example B. Again, you can get all of this in the PDF downstairs. Just click that link right there. It'll take you right to it. Okay. All right. So here's our next example. He's hitting the one again, right? Crucial, like pivotal point to hit the root of the home key as we're getting here. Like this is towards the end of the statement that we're turning ourselves back around to the top, right? It's a blues, very important, crucial structure. Um, so he's hitting one, two, three, one, but then hitting the five, the five of the G chord, or you could make a case of this being D minor seven flat five to G seven right there. If you just call it G seven, this is the fifth and he's hitting the third on beat three. Okay, if we look back here, he's hitting the root on beat one, and then the third on beat three, beats one and three, beats one and three, especially beat one, really, really should be, not in all cases, but in most cases, should be a root, a third, or a fifth. Beat three, same, same scenario, okay? Those are our strong beats when we're walking in four, four. Let's try this. One, two, one, two, three, go. Right? this second bar right that was our bar two of the minor two five I should have said that a second ago when we were just talking about that that's exactly what Paul does like very very often in the second measure when he's playing that minor two five in the second bar crucial got to get that in there let's play this one more time then we'll take it off the screen one two one two three go okay you've got to memorize right one, two, one, two, three, go. Two, 
one, two, three again. Two, one, two, three, go. Two, one, two, three again. One more time. One, two, three, go. Great. Okay, so it's, it's really important to notice too that we are playing this way under tempo. We're hearing a lot of just like straight quarter notes. Everything that, that has been in all of these examples on Mr. PC has all been straight quarter notes. And a lot of that does have to do with the tempo, right? So that's a, that's a key element to note too. A lot of times Paul will put skips in there, eighth notes, triplet drops, leave out beats sometimes. Um, but at this tempo uh, that it's actually recorded at, it's more up tempo and that's, that's crucial to note. So, but that being said, this is the meat, right? These are all the quarter notes. Christian McBride says, give me the meat. Just a little bit of sauce in there. This is the meat right here. These quarter notes, they have to be big and huge, right? Beautiful sound, big, beautiful sound. John Clayton will say that. Um, and that's, that's what's up. So let's look at our last example of the last two bars of the minor blues form, Mr. PC. Okay, so what do we have here? This should be really familiar. This first bar should be straight up familiar. And then, uh, because we just did it a second ago. And, and then we've got another digital pattern here. One, two, three, five. So let's try it. One, two, one, two, three, go. And that would be the top. One, two, three, go. Okay, you got it? Two, three, go. One, two, three, go. One, two, one, two, three, go. Again, one, two, three, go. Keep doing it, repetition is the key. Go. One, two, three, four, one more time, go. Great. So put all of that stuff together and you might get a bass line kind of like this that sounds Paul Chambers-esque, right? And it's just beautifully put together. We want to learn as much as we can from the master, Mr. Paul Chambers. Happy birthday again. April 22nd, Paul Chambers and Charles Mingus's birthday, Earth Day. So um, you put all of that information from all these different examples and you might get a bass line like this. One, two, one, two, three, go. better than that. on your way and then we just got to, have to work on increasing the speed and getting more familiar with it okay so thanks for practicing with me it's been so much fun again this is building blocks of bass my name is Bob Debu. join us every Monday at the same time so now I'm gonna head over into the comments section and see what y'all think about this is this a fun thing to practice um, is this useful information for you what's your experience with this like the minor blues situation so I see we've got some comments and I'm just gonna hop on in here so I'm still here if you're watching this live uh, please let me know what you think. Let's see. Okay. All right. Uh, hold on. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. There's a lot of comments here. Get in there. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da 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 okay. Hey, Damien, what's up? Sorry I'm late. was posting my video on the Jam Session Challenge. Great work, Damien. So Damien's talking about over in Open Studio Pro. It's a great program that's going on. Um, obviously, and open studio, but uh, it's directly related to the Bass All Access Pass too. We've got a lot of really cool things going on uh, over there at Open Studio Online. And again, you can click this link downstairs. We have a special deal today. I think it's for a week. Andrews, or for a week, this 30% off. Yeah, it's for, um, so until Friday probably, 30% uh, off the Bass All Access Pass. He'll drop a, a link downstairs again, just a little bit of information there, but some great, great stuff happening here. So what's up, Damien? Glad you're here as always. Uh, let's see. Oh, Edelson, what's up, man? Good to see you as always. Thanks for joining us again. 
Okay, Busta is never never lying in these comments, in these live chats, and he's continuing that trend right now. Arguably the greatest jazz double bassist from the golden age of jazz circa 1955 to 65. Dead on? No lies there. No lies. Right? And if you're here, you probably already know. I mean, right? Uh, Shashank, what's up? Good to see you again. Always glad to see you here. Yep. Barry Harris's eyelids are twitching. Why is that rowdy, rowdy Roddy? <laughs> But, uh, I mean, you know. Okay, cool. Hey, I got a hug. What's up, Roberto? I'm a Robert, too. Hey, so, appreciate the love. Awesome, thanks for joining me. Busted Bass has a lot of info right here. Uh, Mr. PC, yeah, that's a great book that, that, he, that Busta's talking about right here. I've not gotten through all of it yet, I'm not going to lie, but there's so much good information. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, there's, a, there's a few pages in there. And I've got young kids, so I'm going to get to it someday. <laughs> but uh, a total resource. Check out that Mr. PC Life and Music of Paul Chambers. Okay. Yeah, and Dave's saying, what's up? Yep, yep. Ah, Jesper's saying. So I'm just seeing this, Jesper. Could you turn the metronome off? My bad, bro. I was trying to practice to it. That's the whole idea. <laughs> uh, but sorry, I'm just seeing that now. I might not have turned it off, though, if I saw that comment. Because I'm trying to keep that going. I'm trying to keep my... Internal, and again, we've got this on beat four, and uh, all of that was meant to be practiced along with the metronome that I kept going. So we're practicing. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, so here we go. It's the king of walking, but his soloing and bow work is even more so. Ah, man, I, yeah, I hear you. I love his soloing and his arco work and his compositions too, of course. But yeah, he used something else with his walking, the way he accompanied. I mean, that's, he used, you know, sideman number one, right? Um, anyway, so that's, that's why we're studying his walking lines. Oh, what's up, Chris? Good to see you as always. In bar nine, can you tritone sub the flat six dominant seventh with the two dominant? Um, maybe you could. If that's your root and that's the part of the melody and the reason I'm playing the melody there is because we always want to have that melody in reference to whatever the, whatever the root is or the chord in the moment, right? You could call that maybe a, a D7 a flat nine, or maybe even more so a, like a D7 altered, something like that. But they're not doing that in the recording, basically, and that's why we're playing this flat six. It's more um, dutiful to the actual recording and the lines that Paul was walking. So that's why I've got that there. But I think you could, given the situation. I think that's fair. More common um, substitution might be to do that as a minor, uh, like a minor seven flat five. But, you know, cool. Okay, Busta, are you talking about the, uh, the metronome? <laughs> you tuned it out 20 minutes ago, bro? Okay, so. Oh, Rowdy's like, at least put the click on two and four so Barry Harris doesn't have a stroke, LOL. Hey, Barry, you here? I apologize, bro. <laughs> I practice on beat four because it gives me less information from the metronome. You could also put it on beat one, of course. You could do it without a metronome, of course. I, you know, you, you're getting more, anyways, I don't need to make the case for why I don't put it on two and four, but sometimes I do, right? We've done that before. You can check out About Time, some of the other building blocks of bass. I put it on beat four just because that's where I was feeling it for today. Move it around. So, anyways, thanks, Rowdy Roddy. I, I appreciate you chatting, too. I mean, it's, it's cool with me. So we got a ha. <laughs> nice. Uh-huh. Yeah, totally. So Dave Shepard is saying Barry would tell you to tap your foot on one and three, like against that click on four. Absolutely. So I'm not trying to accent before. And this is really key. So thank you, Dave, for chiming in here too. Absolutely. And this is a big thing you'll hear from you know, a lot of great bass players, hearing the strong beats of beats one and three, right? I'm not trying to accent beat two and four, and you shouldn't try to accent, accent beats two and four or beat four regularly. And that wasn't the point of having the metronome on, beats, on beat four today really hearing, yeah, that big beat of one and three, and especially when we get faster. So if you're hearing like one, two, one, two, three, four. That's not very fast. One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. You might hear that in beats on beats one and three or feel that a little bit better, right? So I think that's crucial. Excellent point, Dave, thank you. Cool. Just for, man, okay, bro. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sorry about the metronome, Jesper. Please, please don't hate us. <laughs> okay, so Chambers and Mingus both took somewhat simple lines and made them sound extraordinary. I feel that's what genius is. Hey, yeah, well put, Sonny. Definitely. Any chance of you getting to play this section to tempo? So I don't know which section you're talking about at this point, but uh, we'll work on up tempo and we can revisit this for sure. We talk, talk, talk about bumping up the tempo of this. This today was really more of a study about the line and the note choices, right? So cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so hey, Leonardo, if you check out the, uh, I've done three videos on, actually with Paul Chambers, talking about rhythm changes. If you go to Open Studio Jazz, uh, their, uh, their YouTube channel, you can see uh, there are three videos titled Walk Like PC, part one, two, and three, and they're all about rhythm changes. So go check that out if you're interested in rhythm changes, but uh, appreciate that comment, thank you. Excellent, all right, getting there, getting there. Hey, Max, what's up? Good to see you as always, man. Thanks for being here. Yo, Pete. Is that a smiley face? My screen is too small. Hopefully that's not a... <laughs> awesome. Hey, what's up? Amazing information for meaningful practice. Great. Uh, you know, I'm just here doing this. I, and if, you know, we're practicing together, so hopefully anybody tuned in is getting something out of this. I know it does for me. It really helps me to practice this and play this along together with y'all. So that's, that's what's up. So, yeah, and hey, welcome. We do this each and every Monday at the same time, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard. Um, and uh, yeah, so come join us again. All right, so what was it? All right, Marco, just got my subscription. Can't wait to get started. Hey, excellent. Welcome. All right, Jota. All right, I'm just, uh, you know, beefing myself up here. Excellent lesson. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Okay, let's see. Where we got? I know, Costa, if I could only get that PC feel, right? Right. Same here. Same here. Same here. All right, there's a bunch going on here. I really love all the comments. Please, I'm just hanging out still, too. So if you've got any anything you want to say, um, any more metronome complaints, <laughs> I'm just joking, man. I'm just joking. All right. Okay. Oh, he's coming back. I understand. I don't mind the beat for. It's just a joke for anyone who's seen the Barry Harris Masterclass. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? I need to watch that again. It's been a long time, I think. If that's the... I, I probably heard him do that before. Is that from the DVD, Rowdy, or is it from, uh, from one of his YouTube... Like, he's, he's been live streaming, like, the master classes, right? Through the pandemic. So, excellent. Leonardo's great. Hey, thanks for joining us. Man, we're here every Monday uh, doing the Building Blocks of Bass pra guided practice sessions. And it's a true pleasure to be able to do this, so please come join us again. All right. All right, all right, here we go. Yeah, okay, I got to put this one up. I, th I think it's the king of instruments, the bass. No doubt, right? That's what we're here. That's what we're doing here, right? <laughs> all right. Hey, okay. Hey, Bob, any tips for structuring a practice routine to keep up those calluses? Yes, for sure. Shashank, shashank, practice every day, of course. Um, if you don't already do this, try setting a timer, maybe for 10 minutes. Walk over Mr. PC. Just set a timer, practice, playing, without taking a break or without jumping from one concept to another. And uh, it could be over any tune. You could walk a blues, but set a timer for 10 minutes. Do that every day. Uh, you could have a metronome on or not. You know, I prefer to, to do that just to help me keep my time a little bit more accountable. Uh, I like to use this metronome called Time Guru, which will slowly take away metronome clicks. And in the first place, I usually just give myself less information from the metronome anyways, such as like putting it on beats two and, two and four or beat four or even less sometimes. But it'll do a gradual thing where it takes away the clicks and you can check your, um, your internal time. You know what I mean? So, um, but, so for 10 minutes every day, walk over a tune that you're really comfortable with. It's a great way to start warming up too, but do that. Say the next week, make that 15 minutes, just on one tune, and try to keep it real, real, you know, tempo-oriented, structured, do you know what I mean? And I think you do that every day, you make a habit of that, a practice of that, add it into the practice you're already doing. But, um, but uh, yeah, it's crucial. We gotta get our calluses back, because 
as things are starting to open up a little bit more, we're going out playing gigs, doing sessions, you know, uh, the more we do that, got to get in shape. So, yeah. So build up those calluses, man. I'm sure you've got, I'm sure you've got it there. Okay. All right. Oh, Rowdy, thanks. It's on YouTube. I'm going to go find that. Okay, cool. I appreciate that. All right. Great. So this has been a lot of fun, as always. I missed you all last week. Uh, by the way, I didn't even address that. I wasn't here for last week's uh, Building Blocks of Bass. Got my second shot. Was knocked out on Monday. But it was worth it. So anyways, happy practicing. Again, my name is Bob Debu. Thank you so much for joining me today, practicing with me here on the Building Blocks of Bass. Please come join me each and every Monday, same time, right here on Open Studio. Happy practicing. Peace, y'all. Peace.